everyone at some point who does solar will slip up and probably melt something. I just need to put a quick warning out there. Please do not look through your telescope without the appropriate equipment fitted to it and try to observe the sun. You could blind yourself, you could melt your own equipment. Herschel Wedge goes on first and comes off last. So first, let's cover off on what sunspots actually are. The sun has magnetic fields going around it like rubber bands. And every 11 years, the sun swaps its magnetic poles around. And when it does that, the magnetic fields are basically reorganizing themselves and are very unstable. Once that realignment process is finished, however, there's a four to five year window where sunspots are likely to form as those magnetic fields become stable. Okay, now get this, this is nuts. Scientists have been recording the number of sunspots on a daily basis since 1610. So you've just learned that the sun flips at the poles every 11 years. And when it does that, there's a period of basically no sunspots, and then for about four to five years, increasing amounts of sunspots, and then it hits a peak. Back in 2020, we started on the upswing, and now we've got tons of them, about 150. When you look at these images that I took at John's place through the eyepiece today, you have to bear in mind that some of these sunspots are literally the size of our own planet. As far as I could see, this is the classification for sunspots based on configuration, size, and distribution. That's what we know about sunspots. So what about these solar flares, like the ones you can see behind me, these massive eruptions of solar energy? What's actually going on there? So at the surface of the sun, where we see a sunspot, we've been able to ascertain that that is because a magnetic field or magnetic fields are suppressing the solar energy in that location from reaching the surface and preventing that energy from being released into space. Like rubber bands, they can snap. And that's when you have this almost volcanic effect. Now, just think about what I said before in terms of the fact that an average sunspot is the size of our own planet. And then you look at the footage behind me at the moment with the size of these solar flares. We are talking about hundreds of our own planets stacked on top of one another. And that's the type of altitude that these flames are reaching. It's just absolutely immense and it boggles the mind. But that's why I love astrophotography. Another thing, it's just the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? I'm caught up now seven months deep down the road into deep sky imaging had no thoughts of actually venturing into visual astronomy whatsoever and met a few people and boom, this big money pit is opening up and beckoning me to fall into it and get in trouble with my wife all over again. But anyway, that's a topic for another day. I think I am probably going to get into visual. I'm starting to really enjoy it. I want to just stress again, please do not look through your telescope at the sun without a Herschel solar wedge and the appropriate precautions.